What is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? I don't know where this is going to go. Because originally what I wanted to do was a Nate Talks kind of bouncing off of the previous one. And a bunch of comments regarding how difficult uh, fighting games really are. And especially kind of hitting on all the mechanics of it. Basically, because like one thing that really irked me was that there were a good chunk of people that um, like made bullet point lists of like every single possible mechanic that you could utilize in whatever fighting game they were talking about and that was it and just like to try and point out that this is why fighting games are hard and it just it really irked me because I think I'm pretty fucking good at fighting games especially the ones that I poured the most amount of time into like I'm pretty decent at blaze blue right I'm not the best I'm not about to go in Evo at any point in time but I could compete with anybody in this game and I can beat the majority of the people in this game. Same thing with Marvel vs. Capcom 3 back when, you know, I was actively playing that. And I feel like I can do that with any game if, if I enjoy playing the game enough to really start grinding it and get better at it. Then I can hit that level. I can hit whatever level I really want to. It just it depends on the effort poured into it. And I never really felt like it's overly difficult. It's just I have to put that effort in, right? So it was this divisive kind of thing between is a game hard because it requires putting in work is that what makes a game hard and and you know like that's but ultimately that's all it boiled down to was that one statement if you believe that yes because you have to put some practice in because you have to put some work in that it, it is in its very nature difficult then yeah fighting games are hard to you i didn't believe that and i just felt like for a lot of people calling fighting games hard was just a crutch was just an excuse for why they're bad they want to say it is hard because they want to have that fallback for like i'm super bad at this but i don't want to say that i'm super bad at this so thus it's not me it's not me it's the game the game is hard that's it right because there's a fairly infamous clip of James Chen playing Tekken. I can't remember specifically what happened. I think he dropped something and then he got hit by like one of the slowest lows in the world. Uh, but that's kind of Tekken in a nutshell. Like there's a scrub way to play it and there's a good way to play it. And the scrub way to play it is to rely on like these 30 frame startup lows that give you massive juggles that you can get like 60% combos off of. It's a bad time if you get hit by one of those. And I think that's what happened is he got hit by one of those and lost the round and he just lost his shit. Just went mental. And uh, just was screaming like, Tekken's hard. Tekken is so fucking hard. Just look up like James Chen Tekken on YouTube and look for the look for the video from the YouTube channel Avoiding the Puddle if you want to see what I'm talking about. Because then it's like, like if you just look at the video solely of James Chen, it's pretty sad and honestly it's just kind of pathetic. But if you look at Eris's reaction to it, it's fucking hilarious. It make it makes it much better. So check that one out. Don't look at the clip itself because again, it's it's very sad. But that's another component to it is that you have people that are notable names within the FGC that, let's be perfectly blunt, aren't very good at fighting games. And there are plenty of them. Some of the most popular streamers just aren't particularly good at fighting games, but they are popular. And so, because of their popularity, they do have uh, an opinion that gets spread around. And if one of them calls a game hard, people parrot it. They have may have never played the game themselves before, but they just parrot it over and over. And so, I feel like it just you've if you've ever specifically gone out and said to somebody, "This game is super hard," I feel like you're misrepresenting it, and you're kind of putting doubt into somebody's mind about whether or not they're good enough and the simple fact of the matter is, is that anybody in the world is good enough to learn how to play a fighting game but you have to spend that time to learn right and that, so that was kind of the entire thing and i was going to go into this whole spiel about how you know like a lot of people just can't handle it mentally because it's 1v1 and deep down ultimately you know if you got beat it was because you got outplayed like people will always try to make excuses Right, they'll try to lean on matchups, they'll try to lean on tier lists. Uh, the, if they think your tactic is scrubby, they'll say you're cheap and you're abusing easy tactics rather than, you know, you, that you're outplaying them. People will always look for excuses. Um, but deep down, because it is 1v1, there's just, there is no real excuse 
to be had. Ultimately, you have to understand. There is an intrinsic understanding that because it is 1v1, you are the one to blame. It is your fault. And that's why there's so little retention in games like this is because people can't deal with that. And that really bugs me. But, um, I don't know. I, I couldn't really get that entire thing into like a full Nate Talks. And I was going to also compare it to like MOBAs because if you actually look at the rank layout in MOBAs, I, I it's a lot worse than I thought it was. Like in League of Legends, for instance, I think about 75 to 80% of the population is either bronze or silver rank. Like they're not very good in general. And yet you see time and time again if you play these games and it's the same in any game any team-based game i've seen it in overwatch i've seen it in all mobas that i have played anything team-based you constantly see people say i'm not the problem i'm stuck here because of the matchmaking i'm better than this it's because of uh my teammates my throwing ass stupid ass teammates that i'm stuck here has nothing to do with me i am blameless which is just the dumbest thing in the world. And I, I I can't even begin to fathom how people get that delusional. Especially when, uh, like, this happened constantly in, my, in games that I played, right? Like, I played League for a little bit. And I still remember one of the last games that I played had somebody who was talking just so much shit all game long. They were clearly the worst person on the team, right? Like, I'm not very good, and I'll freely admit that. I don't really have enough experience to be good at MOBAs. I have, like, delved into the shallow end of the pool, but I've never really gone for a dive in the deep end to really improve and get better. So I know where I'm at. I know exactly how good I am, and that's not very good. And unfortunately, in this particular game, I got auto-filled to the role called ADC, which is, there are five roles that you can take, ADC is the one that, number one, I am the worst at, and number two, that I dislike the most. I hate ADC, but I got auto-filled into it. I had to do it. Nobody wanted to trade with me, so I told them beforehand, like, yo, guys, like, I'm shit. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. You got to understand, I'm not going to have a good performance, so I apologize, but if nobody wants to switch with me, you're just going to have to deal with that, right? Nobody wanted to switch, so I was just put in that situation. Despite that, this person was far worse than me way worse but was the one that was talking the absolute most amount of shit right so just out of curiosity i looked them up this person had won out of their last 20 games they had been victorious in four of them they had a 20 percent win rate over their past 20 games and this person thinks that it's their teammates that's the fault they had the worst they had the most amount of deaths in every single match if they were in a lane they had like the least cs in the game aside from the supports which is just means they have no net worth they have no uh impact on the game because they're not strong at all they are weak because they suck at laning and yet this person firmly believes deep down that they are great at this game and it's their teammates that are the problem right and this mentality is so prevalent it's not my fault it's the game's fault. It's uh, the developer's fault because they put some cheap shit in the game, but I am too honorable to abuse it, right? We've seen this in every fighting game we've ever been in. There is always a character that people are just like, man, you're a scrub bitch. Don't even talk to me if you use this character, right? I think Cthulhu posted in the Discord recently. I want to say it was Cthulhu. I'm not sure. It might have been somebody else. But this post from Game FAQs about somebody who was like the most... Tip my fedora at you, m'lady. Post I've ever seen in my life about Goku Black and how, like, you have no honor if you use this character. If you use this character, do not expect a rematch. Do not expect... You may even... I may even rage quit on you if you are winning. Uh, I, I apologize. He didn't use the term rage quit because that would imply negativity on his part. That would imply that he is, in fact, the bitch that he is. Uh, you may get deceit upon i think that was the term that he used you will be teabagged if i am beating you like just that kind of post that's all over the place in fighting games there is like there's certain characters that just people will intrinsically just be like yeah you're a scrub if you use this character now me personally i have those characters too if you're a hazama player fuck you i hate you <laughs> 
but I'm still not like I just hate playing against that character. It sucks. Uh, but I don't think, like, you're an actual scrub if you use this character, right? Some of the best players in the world, uh, use Hazuma. Rest in peace, Mitsurugi, whatever the hell happened to that dude. Um, but yeah, like, this kind of mentality is so prevalent throughout anything that's competitive. And so that was kind of, like, my ultimate argument was that fighting games are no more difficult than any other game in existence. It's just that due to the competitive nature, due to the complete, like, disregard of developers to actually create uh solid engaging single player content with ai that's actually enjoyable to fight against the only real point of fighting games is to play them against other people and so because you're playing against other people naturally the skill floor to even begin to have fun is much higher because it nobody has fun if they're playing and they don't understand what's happening right like they just get blown the fuck up and they don't understand a single thing that occurred why they just got fucked up that's not fun a loss can be fun if it's a well, like, a balanced match back and forth and you understand why you lost and what you need to improve upon and maybe you can do that in the next match. Th those kind of losses, obviously nobody enjoys losing, but they can be made to be enjoyable. You can't, like, it's not just an inherently completely negative thing to lose, but it absolutely is if you lose and you don't understand why. And so that is a large component of why I think people perceive fighting games to be difficult is because it requires a much higher skill floor. Whereas, like, any other game that you can think of with gameplay inherent in it is, like, so... is potentially so much more difficult than the majority of people ever delve into, right? It's so much more involved. I remember, for me personally, the first time I ever really kind of looked at a game, at other people playing a game, was Tales of Vesperia. I wanted to see what kind of combos, what kind of stuff was available for different characters that I didn't really utilize that much or that I wanted to get better with. And so I remember looking up a, vi a video of Tales of Vesperia with the character Judith and people doing like infinite air combos against things, just infinite juggles that never ended, just looked so amazing, so fluid. Their understanding of the gameplay and their ability to uh, execute within the confines of uh, the gameplay that the game tried to put on them and then basically just breaking it wide open blew my fucking mind. I still can't even do any of that. I never, like, looked into it. I never practiced it. I just watched it and was like, holy shit, that's amazing! And then I never did any of it. I never tried to do any of it. But that's kind of my point, is that in games like that or in any kind of game where there's a difficulty setting, think of how many people bother to beat games on their hardest difficulty. Period. Like, think of actual diff games that are actually considered difficult. Things like Bayonetta, Ninja Gaiden, Devil May Cry. They have some very, very, very hard difficulty levels to them. Think of how many people have actually bothered to even try to play them on those hardest difficulties, let alone getting good enough at the game to beat it, right? Whereas when you're in a fighting game, you kind of have to be playing on hard mode if you're fighting against somebody else. That's just the nature of the beast. Because you're fighting against something that is more adaptive, that is more understanding, and is e even more random to deal with than an AI will ever be, at least, you know, for the foreseeable future in video games. And, uh... So, by all of that stuff combined, like, you can definitely say that fighting games are hard, but I still just kind of think, like... If that's all you boil it down to, if you just say, yeah, fighting games are hard, that's it. Like, you're misrepresenting what fighting games are and you're potentially fucking up somebody's potential enjoyment by them just being like, okay, whatever, I just, I'll just stick to what I know instead of putting in the effort, right? Whereas, maybe if they did put in the effort, they'd have the most fun they've ever had in their life. And so it just kind of sucks when I see things like that and people just dismiss it because it is potentially hard or like... I saw a bunch of other comments, like I kind of mentioned earlier, the bullet list, uh, the bullet point list thing, about people who would say like, oh yeah, I tried to get my friends into this, but then I started going into, you know, like these 37 different mechanics that are in the game, and they were just like, oh yeah, no, never mind, that's too much. Like, what the fuck kind of teaching are you trying to do? Think of every teacher you've ever had. Did they ever teach you by just, like, having the book in front of them, but not allowing you to get a peek at it? And you just and they just slammed a list in front of you of all the various topics of all the headlines for every single chapter, but then not giving you any context. You have no under you have no prior understanding, no fundamentals to build upon. And they just said, "This is everything you're gonna have to learn. Get started." No, that's not how you teach. Think of math, like the most basic thing, one of the most essential things you ever learn. 
you start with basic arithmetic, right? And from there, you move on to some geometric principles. From there, you start getting into algebra, and this is where things kind of start to maybe ramp up, get a little complicated. Then you start dealing with trigonometry, and you, that's where a lot of people get weeded out. That's where you kind of start to understand, like, all right, math may not be for me. This sine, cosine shit, some bullshit. I don't want to be a part of this. I'm not that goddamn interested in triangles. Get me the fuck out of here, right? And then you get into calculus, and then from there you get into like differentials and linear algebra and it's just like it gets some mind-blowing shit starts happening, right? Do you think that anybody would ever be interested in math if somebody walked up to you and just slammed down a 15-page der derivation of some like massive equation and they were like, this is mathematics right here, this is what you're going to have to learn, have fun. That's essentially what you're doing if you hop in on somebody and you're like, all right, Here's what yellow Roman cancel means. Here's what red Roman cancel means. Here's what purple Roman cancel means. Like, motherfucker, they got to learn which buttons to press first. They got to learn how to do a combo before they got to bother caring about Roman cancels. They got to understand what they're doing in neutral to understand what the point of a yellow Roman cancel is. You're trying to teach them how to instant block. They don't even know how to normal block yet. Like, all this kind of shit. You got to teach somebody, right? And so I was going to have, I basically made a Nate Talks out of this already about things that I was going to talk about, if that is any kind of indication about how in-depth I was going to go for like no real point. So I'm just going to stop here because <laughs> there is at least one other thing I want to talk about and that may go into other things. What the fuck happened to Combo Fiend? That's my question. I looked this up like a week ago and I got kind of sad because basically if you look at his Twitter timeline, he had like... He has one recent tweet, which I can't remember if it was January 17th or March 17th. Can't remember what. But it was one recent tweet that was like, Hey, yo, are there any SF5 sessions going on in somewhere? It was somewhere in Southern California, I think. I want to practice. And then prior to that, there was a retweet for the 20th anniversary collection thing for Street Fighter. And then prior to that was from like September that was a retweet of something from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And that's where it got really sad. Because, obviously, everybody knows Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite didn't really go over very well. And uh, so it's just a bunch of, like, retweets of people being like, Man, I thought Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was gonna be shit. Turns out, it's the shit. I love this game. Like, just a bunch of that stuff. And then nothing. It just disappears until, like, three months later, a retweet. Of the Street Fighter 20th Anniversary Collection. And then, like, three months later, hey, yo, anybody playing Street Fighter Five in the area? It just, it kind of made me sad, because Combo Fiend's one of those dudes that he's always exciting to watch when he was in a tournament. Uh, always fun to see him making appearances at places. And so then I looked into it further, and as it turns out, he's apparently not working for Capcom anymore. I guess Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite buried him. So, that's kind of unfortunate. On the flip side of that, you know, he did... Because you have to imagine, right, when you're on... When you're, like, the public relations, you're the public face of a company, which is essentially what he was for American Capcom, you're gonna have to say some shit you don't believe in. You're gonna have to say some shit you definitely don't want to say. So you have to kind of wonder, like, how much of what he said did he actually believe? And, like... Uh, I don't know, that dude just disappeared, because the reason why I'm kind of thinking of this is I want to see an AMA from him, because <laughs> Mike Ross just did an AMA, like, yesterday, shit, uh, I'll link to it, but it was very informative, I suppose, because, I mean, like, he has, for a member of the FGC, he had a very enviable position, right, he was basically on the inside with Capcom, uh, one of the most well-known faces in the entire FGC. He had a job with Twitch, which I have to imagine was very cushy. Uh, again, just v a very enviable kind of thing. And then, you know, he kind of outlines why he left it all behind. I'm not going to talk about it myself because that's, you can just go read it if you would like to. He goes into, uh, depth and obviously he knows his scenario more than me. And, uh, it just kind of hurt to see that kind of thing because again that is kind of like not necessarily the dream but definitely a dream for a lot of people to get to where he got to and to see how much it kind of hurt him to be there and how much doubt it gave him really sucks 
to see. And especially, again, I mean, it was just more backhands to Capcom in general because he mentioned that, like, Capcom didn't want to support uh, his Capcom Pro Talk thing because they just, they saw no monetary value in it. Despite the fact that it was the most watched anything in the FGC that was not a tournament and it was growing week over week it was getting bigger as time went along like it just it sucks it really sucks to see that they're just so dismissive of such an amazing thing that had so much potential to grow if it just got properly supported guess what else that sounds like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite just making the same mistakes over and over and over and over. How many times are you going to shoot yourself in the foot before you understand that you're stupid and you need to stop being stupid? You know how many times I've seen companies in general these days talk about how like, oh yeah, you know, we know we fucked up. A large part of that is due to a lack of communication on our part. We are going to try our hardest to communicate more with you guys, to keep you guys more in the loop so you know what's going on, you know where our minds are at, blah, 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 that bullshit. And it's never followed through on. Not once has a company that has fucked up and then gone out to say that actually maintained their promise. And Capcom is a huge... They've done it like four separate fucking times. And people still buying their damn games. God damn it, it pisses me off. Because, <laughs> uh, like, I don't know. There are just so many companies that are making products that are so much more worthy of your money than anything that comes out of those studios. But then they go along and make Monster Hunter World, which you can't deny is a pretty fucking quality game. Maybe Like, for me personally, I can't get into it. The gameplay isn't for me. It's too slow. It's too methodical. Uh, I get bored. Um, and for that, like, it's just not for me, but I can still look at it and understand why other people like it, why it is an objectively good game, and it's just, again, not for me, but it just blows my mind that they can have a team that can put in so much work, so much effort, create a product like Monster Hunter World, and then on the flip side of that, you have two, you have, like, one of the most storied video game companies in the world one of the most storied companies period in the world behind marvel and then even further behind marvel you have the entirety of disney behind this shit and they churn out some like direct to dvd quality style crap like marvel vs capcom infinite like how does this even happen how does this occur how does the same company make one game that's so fucking phenomenal and then another game that is so fucking bad. Especially one that I wanted to be good. I don't want it to be bad. But then they go and make Venom DLC. They make Black Panther DLC. Monster Hunter DLC. They make all these characters that are actually interesting DLC. And the most boring, fucking predictable, lazy ass characters on the base roster. Shit, boy. I'm not gonna get into it. God damn it. I could go all day. I hate what they did to that game. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was my shit. I have not had more fun with a fighting game than I had with that particular game. And to see it just dive bomb so fucking hard. Ah! Uh, what did you do? It just sucks. And then they did the same thing with Street Fighter V too. Like, fuck, man. I don't even want them to make a Darkstalkers anymore. <laughs> They're gonna fuck it up too hard. Jesus. It just hurts. It hurts so much. Dragon Ball Fighters sucked. <laughs> Street Fighter V sucked. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite sucked. Plays Loose Central Fiction sucked. Under Night and Burst, the only fucking fighting game worth playing anymore, but nobody else goddamn plays it. Tekken 7 worth playing. But fuck that game, it takes too much effort. <laughs> it wasn't even that, man. I, it, For me personally, t I just, I wanted to kill myself trying to play that game because they fucked up so hard on the matchmaking on all the mo different modes Ugh, so many disconnections so many like matchmaking cannot function whatever the hell the different messages were that was what really killed me I, I wanted to learn the game I didn't want to learn Brian I did want to learn Brian and then I, I tried to do some of his taunt cancel shit and let me tell you you want to talk about difficulty in fighting games? Let's talk about Brian's taunt cancel shit. You have to do, like, frame-perfect inputs with this motherfucker to do his taunt cancel combos. It's insane. It's insane 
how somebody, how knee, how Mr. Naps does this Jimmy Tran? I guess he doesn't go by Mr. Naps anymore. Is it Jimmy or Johnny? I think it's Jimmy Tran. Maybe it's Johnny. Shit, I don't know. I don't pay enough attention to Tekken. But yeah, like, how they manage to do this consistently... Every single tournament, match over match over match, they're just hitting every single taunt cancel, knowing how fucking difficult it is. Just blows my goddamn mind. It's insane. Do I have anything else to go with? Oh, King of Fighters 14 sucked too. Let's not leave anything out. <laughs> oh, shit. Revelator 2.0 didn't suck, but Biking and Answer did, so it may as well have sucked in my eyes. They still suck. They do an entire balance patch. They buff Johnny. They nerf Answer. They barely touch Biking and Potemkin. Fucking hell. And they can't buff Potemkin. Their entire exposure to Potemkin comes from FAB. When you got a player like FAB representing a character, they think the character's fine. He doesn't need anything. Look at this dude tearing ass up. He's got like an 80% win rate in arcades over 15,000 matches. This character doesn't need anything. <laughs> Who cares that he's the only notable Potemkin that's ever come out of this game? Who cares that every other one's struggling like mad and wishes the character was better? Fab's doing fine, so fuck it. <laughs> but Biken doesn't have that representative. Neither does Answer. They're not going to give them shit. What are you doing? Stop wasting your time on Dragon Ball Fighters. It failed. Commercially, it's a success. Competitively, it sucks. Everybody's using the same fucking characters. Bamco isn't interested in doing rebalancing. There's some rumor floating around that they're going to nerf Vegeta's assist in 16 in the next patch, which I have to imagine is just complete bullshit. Because if that wasn't bullshit, that would actually be a pretty big story that people would pick up on and not just be some random Twitch monster thing that people are spamming in chat like plus even then that's not the right way to go even if they are like let's just pretend for a single instant that it's possible that they're gonna do some random rebalancing and the only thing they're gonna touch on is vegeta assist in 16 nerfing anything in dragon ball fighters is not the way to go there is not enough interesting shit in that game to justify nerfs if you want to do anything you need to buff everything else pure and simple 16 is not too good 16 is incredible he is very good he may very well be the best character in the game he's definitely up there as a front runner with a dog gohan and cell but he is not too good he is not there is no justification possible to nerf this character beyond and eh, people are complaining about him so why the fuck not right which we see all the time. NRS is very guilty of this, of making just like bending to public uh, willpower. Shouldn't even say willpower. Public bitching and uh, making snap nerfs that they don't really even understand their game well enough to begin with to understand why it's potentially bad or even potentially good. This happened with Sentinel in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Initially, everybody was saying this character's too good. He's too good, he's busted, he's broken, it's Marvel vs. Capcom 2 all over again. They nerf him, like week one, two weeks into the game, people start understanding how easy it is to abuse him, and how, aside from his assist, he's honestly kind of detrimental uh, to the game, or to, like, to your team, and uh, too late, they'd already nerfed him. <laughs> they just didn't give them the proper time to understand, so, like, it just, it sucks when companies make these decisions, so if it even is, if there even is a kernel of truth to the idea that they are going to nerf 16 and they're going to nerf Vegeta's assist, that just makes me lose even more respect for the devs for this game because it's just a lack of understanding of what the game could be, of what it, of what will make it ultimately exciting and what will determine whether or not it lasts competitively. And making things worse in that game is not going to be it. You need to make everything else better. Pure and simple. So, I really hope that is not true. But I guess we'll see. Anyway, that's that's it for me. I'm done rambling. I'm outie. Thank you for listening. Peace.